What's up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big NCAA March Madness Tournament breakdown of the East region. To check out the entire show, hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on Odds.com. And we move on to Saturday action here in the East region. Saturday, March 20th, we start at 12.15 p.m. Eastern. Oh, I can't wait for this game. Georgetown Hoyas. 13 and 12. Patrick Ewing's boys versus Colorado Buffalo is 22 and 8. Hinkle Field House in Indianapolis, Indiana. Georgetown opens up as five and a half point dogs. Now they're five point dogs. This total opened up at 138 and a half. Now it's at 137. Georgetown looked better heading into the Big East playoffs than they had during their five-game losing streak in late December and early January. But no one thought that Patrick Ewing's team would rise up from the eighth seed in the Big East playoffs <clears throat> and run the table. But that's exactly what they did. Impressive wins over Marquette, Villanova, Seton Hall set them up for a date with Creighton in the Big East final. They were eight-and-a-half-point dogs and left as the Big East champion after a dominant 73-48 win. Senior Chudier Chudier Bile led the way with 19 points, eight boards. He had scored 16 points in the previous three tournament games combined. On the season, he averaged 10.2 points, 5.1 boards, and that's down from his 14.3 points, 7.6 boards of last year. They're led by Javon Blair, who averages 15.8 points, 3.7 assists. Next up, 6'11 center, Nigerian center Wahab averages 12.4 points, eight boards. Then comes Jamarco Pickett, who averages 12.3 points, 7.4 boards. Georgetown averages 71.4 points per game and can be sloppy. They average 15.3 turnovers a game, and six players average two or more, and a seventh averages 1.8 turnovers a game. They hit 42.4% from the field, 36.6 from three, and 74.4 from the stripe. Here we go, another Pac-12 team, and Max despises the conference for good reason. Colorado had won six straight before losing 70-68 to Oregon State in the Pac-12 final as eight-and-a-half-point favorites. Colorado was picked to finish seventh in the preseason poll despite the return of McKinley Wright, one of the best guards in college basketball. Behind Wright, 6'8", 262-pound big man Evan Batty. Colorado finished third in the Pac-12, then down to the wire wins over California and number 23 USC in the conference tournament. McKinley Wright, the fourth, averaged 15.5 points, 4.3 boards, 5.6 assists. He can be trusted. Batty averaged 10.2 points, 5.4 boards. Jeremiah Horn averaged 11.4 points, 5.8 boards, hit 42.1 from three. As a team, they score 73 points per game, and with the ball in McKinley Wright's hands, only turned it over 11.1 times a game. They hit 45.5% from the field, 36.7% from three, and a very nice 82.2% from the line. Max, what do we do here? 12, 15 p.m. Eastern, East Region, Georgetown, Colorado. Yeah, listen, Jim, this is a tough matchup because on paper, Colorado should win this game. But if you're going by recent performance and who has the best feel, continuity, and chemistry going on, you got to look at Georgetown. With Colorado in that motion offense, it obviously revolves around McKinley Wright. I think that with those 143 two-point field goals that he's scored so far in the year, how do you stop this guy in the mid-range? How do you keep him off the free throw line where he's an 83% free throw shooter? The guy's drawing five fouls a game and getting to the free throw line, you know? And if you think that you're going to be able to do something on offense to help him lose his cool and get a cheap foul on him, probably not going to happen. I think that when you look at this Colorado team, you know, they got very good size with Dallas Walton. And I think that Sean Schwartz and his versatility is definitely going to be key. But the bottom line is Colorado has to rebound the basketball. They have to push off those misses and they got to get off to a quick start. If they get exploited into the man to man, by the dribble drive and a lot of penetration, a lot of screens. Well, I know a kid from Toronto. His name is Javon Blair. That's how he scores the basketball off those off-ball screens. So I think that it could be problematic for Colorado, especially going up against the quality of a Big East team. I think that with Colorado, with that man-to-man -man defense, they want to protect that 
vulnerability that they have at the rim. While they do have good size, the rim protection really just isn't there in my opinion. I think that if they can force Georgetown to be a predominantly jump shooting team, then they can definitely win and cover this number. But with Georgetown, you know, everywhere that they've been putting the basketball up, they've been scoring. They got great size. They have to be more efficient close to the rim. And Blair's got to be able to come off the bench and give you that six-man energetic, maybe 25-point effort. You know, you need an outlier performance. You need that offensive rebounding to extend those possessions. Georgetown's been able to do a lot of that. But the reason why I'm going to take Georgetown in this game is because the defense is going to be the difference. I think that with the length, athleticism, the guys who can lead that, who can lead guard excuse me, the guys who can guard all spots, especially the lead guard positions, I think that's the most important thing. I think that Chody Urbayo, while he did average 14 at Northwestern State, you are going up in quality and talent to the Big East. His performance, along with Dante Harris, and I would say actually more their emergence, has been definitely a defining moment for this team. Patrick Ewing has never won any awards with from me when it comes to quality of coaching, but these players are making them look good and they're making them look good on the defensive end with timely steals, good help defending blocks, good pass deflections, and dominating on the offensive glass. I think that Georgetown wins the first half, starts off with hot shooting, plays a good inside-out game plan, works it side to side to find that corner or wing three-point opportunity. And you want to exploit Colorado's three-point defense because that's the biggest weakness on defense for them. You got to win at the free throw line because Colorado's going to do a good job, in my opinion, of being able to limit your free throw appearances. So you got to definitely thwart their glass work with your size and avoid silly turnovers. If Georgetown plays to a percent, maybe to 75% of how they played in that championship game, they definitely could stay within the number and if not advance. So I'll take Georgetown first half on the money line and then I'll take Georgetown on the spread full game, Jim. Wow. Very, very exciting action. Well, let's get you started with Georgetown plus five and a half. It's available at BetMGM and Circa. The other books are at five, either at minus 105, minus minus 110. Plus five and a half and minus 110. Yeah. Get you started there uh, from Circa. And now let's shop for a first half money line and see what we can give you. So let's see what is the best so far. Plus 180 is the best so far. Let's see if we can beat that. No, plus 180 right now from Ben MGM. Can that be beat? Plus 185. Oh, sorry. This is first half. Shit. My fault. Focus. Come on. Get in there. Okay, here we go. First half. Ooh, Circa not offering a money line. Let's get this here. My fault for keeping everybody. First half money line for Max. Plus 167 is what we're working with here. Can we beat 167? I expect that we'll be able to. Let's see. No. Uh, plus 155. And the final shot to beat plus 167. Money line. No. That's the best so far. Plus 167 at bet 365. Yeah, that's fine by me. First half plus 167, bet 365. And, man, did Matt take Max take these to the bank in the last round or in the conference tournament. See, first half money lines on dogs that he liked. So Georgetown Hoy is plus 5.5 minus 110 at Circa. And first half money line plus 167 at bet 365. What a great, exciting breakdown. 